Welcome to How to Build a Tent. This show is not about tent building, but it's how to make you successful. My name is Matt Williams. Thank you for tuning into the show. Do people say tuning in anymore? I don't know. You're really like clicking a button. You're not really tuning a radio frequency anymore. But thank you for listening. Thank you for watching the show, whichever one it may be. We are part of the Fight, Laugh, Feast network. Go over to fightlaughfeast.com. Become a member. Put an H. T B T in the memo field, how to build a tent, HTBT in the memo field, and you will get a free HTBT mug. I have a can of a sparkling drink that is not a sponsor, so I'm not going to say the name of it instead of my mug today because it's getting washed. But you will get a mug. You can have as many mugs as you want. Just get as many, get a bunch of members to sign up using HTBT and have them give you your mug and then you won't have run into the problem I have and have to wash mugs. It's a terrible problem to have. I can't stay on top of the dishes. Today we're going to talk about something really immoral I did this weekend, according to the left that is. Before we do, if you have any questions, comments, you want to give me some recommendations on show topics that you would love to hear. In fact, today's show is about that about a topic that one of you, or actually a few of you, reached out to me and wanted me to talk about. So we're gonna do that today. You can find me on email, matt at howtobuildatent.com. You can find me on the social media sites, How to Build a Tent. We're gonna start streaming the shows and posting the shows on the How to Build a Tent YouTube channel. We just started that, we just started, so you could be like the first subscriber on YouTube, on Facebook, How to Build a Tent. We're gonna also be live streaming there, 12 p.m. Pacific. You can find us on Twitter, How to Build a Tent, Instagram, Periscope, all of those great places. And of course, you can email me, don't forget about the business plan contest that's coming up. And remember, if you are not gonna make the deadline, you're not gonna qualify for the contest, sorry, rules are rules, but I will still review your business plan if you like and give you some feedback I want to encourage those of you who started or who are thinking about starting, it's late in the game and you just don't think you'll get it done on time, that's cool. I'd be more than happy to review your business plans for you. Now, let's just get down to it because I know you're dying. You heard me say I did something immoral and you want to get the juicy, the juicy details about what did I do that was so immoral according to the left. Well. I itemized my tax deductions and filed my taxes and got a lot of write-offs because I did that. And I didn't have to pay as many taxes as if I didn't. And you might be like, what are you talking about? Why do you think that the left thinks it's immoral? Well, you may have heard in the news, I shared it on my Twitter, about a certain company that for some reason has become this uh, vilified, I almost said demonized, I guess that works too company by the left of their own. I mean, Jeff Bezos is pretty leftist. That's right. It's Amazon. And I'm telling you, those guys do not get a break. When you are in the crosshairs of the progressive mob, there's just no escaping it. They are coming to destroy you, even if they're on your side, like Jeff Bezos is. And you might have seen articles, there's like Fortune wrote about it. I know the Times wrote about it. And, and NSBC, NSBC and CBS, and CBS, you know the one I'm talking about, NBC, the, but the news channel. I don't know why I can't think of the acronym right now. They're all writing about it and they have these like negative slants that Amazon is immoral and they, they make it sound like they're like tax evading and they're gonna get thrown in jail like any moment the feds are gonna raid them because they didn't pay their taxes, not last year, but also in 2017, and something needs to be done about it. Really fascinating. And even Congress people are weighing in, and we're gonna get into that in a second, which will be really funny. Well, I'm actually in a few minutes, we're gonna get that to the end. So we're gonna talk about that. Now, a little fun facts about Amazon and this whole situation before we dive in. Amazon is worth about $800 billion, which is pretty crazy. This year, they might hit the $1 trillion valuation. A company worth $1 trillion. This company is absolutely amazing to me. They are on the left wing. It's really sad that they're, you know, Jeff has kind of gone that way. I don't think he's a Christian. And 
but the success he's had, the innovation he's had, the way he's been able to run that company is absolutely amazing. And I'm a big admirer of how he's been able to take an online bookstore and turn it in into what it is today. $800 billion right now. They have $232 million in revenue. Actually, it's 233 and it's 232.9 billion dollars. I said million, billion dollars in revenue. Yeah, and then for, so in 2017 and 16, they paid zero dollars in taxes. $800 billion company, $232 billion, $233 billion, and they paid zero in federal tax money. And, and, but I will say this, the state and other countries, they paid $756 million. So my question is, why were they paying taxes to the state? Why were they paying taxes to these international countries, but didn't pay federal taxes? No, they didn't break the law. No, they're not treated differently than any other company is. They were simply following the tax law that Congress passed. They were simply following the tax law that Congress passed. I love this one quote in an article talking about this. One reason this article says is the Jobs Act Congress enacted in 2017 from 20, 35 to 21% corporate tax rate. So the article is quoting, in, or the article is talking about how this jobs, this jobs, the Jobs Act that Congress passed to cut the corporate tax rate from 35 to 21% was one of the reasons Amazon is, is not paying any federal income tax. It's not that Amazon is swindling Congress, but it's that Congress is the result of what this is. This is Congress's fault. The Amazon lawyers, the Amazon accountants, the Amazon chief accounting officer is simply going by the book and playing by the rules that Congress passed, which is just why it's amazing to me that Congress is so up in arms about it. They're following the laws that Congress passed. And no doubt those Congress people are also doing the same thing as Amazon did, the same thing that I did this weekend. And the funny thing, and I love this quote, and the reason I'm bringing this quote up, that they're going after this reduction in the corporate in uh, corporate tax is because they're not really upset about Amazon. They're really not. They're upset about the tax cut across the board. They're upset that everyone doesn't have to pay in that every corporation doesn't have to pay 35% anymore. They want as much of your money as possible. And Amazon is just the tool that they're using, the punching bag that they're using to try to instill this resentment and hatred towards successful businesses that are following the rules that Congress wrote in order to take more of our money. Another quote, in addition to the lower tax rates for corporations, the new tax law also, quote, failed to close a slew of tax loopholes that allow profitable companies to routinely avoid paying federal and state income taxes on almost half of their profits, the senior fellow from ITEP, Matthew Gardner, wrote in the report Wednesday. And this was the report that kind of just got it going, where everyone was up in arms. And let me tell you, you can always tell it's a leftist who is writing the report opposed to a normal person because they call a deduction or a tax credit a loophole. It's not a loophole if it's written into law or it's kept in the law. That is called a deduction. That is called a tax credit. And they're just trying to give a negative connotation to it. Again, they're trying to demonize the law that Congress wrote themselves to be able to have momentum, to have political clout, to raise taxes again because they want more of your money. So next time that you see a loophole, a loophole is when there is an oversight where there wasn't intended to be a way to not pay taxes or something to that effect. But when it's written into the code, when there's a tax credit, when you are given a tax credit, when you are allowed a deduction, that is not a loophole. That is not a loophole at all. Another thing that you can always tell is if it's a liberal or conservative is how they framed Trump in the argument. This is another great 
little quote that says, the fact that the new tax law, which was strongly backed by President Donald Trump and his administration, has helped Amazon and other companies lower their federal tax obligation is somewhat ironic considering that the president has railed against Amazon in particular for paying little or no, no taxes to state and local governments. And I love this because what do the left always say about Donald Trump? He's a dictator. He is going to be this authoritarian figure. But look, this company that Trump has been railing against, he's not like raising their taxes. He's not throwing them in jail for not paying their taxes. But what? They get to benefit just like the rest of us because Amazon doesn't get unequal treatment either. Justice is blind, even in tax laws, or it should be blind, I guess. I mean, talk to the Clintons about blind justice, right? And the other thing I love about this is Amazon didn't pay taxes in 2017 either, like I said. But the tax law that Trump passed, that Congress wrote, didn't go into effect until last year in 2018. So it can't be all this, you know, Donald Trump and the tax law that came out that cut tax, corporate tax rates is the issue. No, it's been part of what Congress has written into the law for a long time. And yet they're still trying to blame Trump. They're still trying to blame the tax cuts, but it's just how our tax system works. And it's so disingenuous that people are using the existing law for however many, however long there has been deductions and tax credits to try to vilify corporations for taking advantage of the things Congress wrote into the law. Congressman, if you are complaining about this, then change it. And if you're not going to change it, then stop being dishonest to the American people. Stop trying these Marxist attacks of putting rich people against poor people, successful companies against the other people in our country. It's not helping our country. You're not serving anyone but yourself. So Amazon does project that it will get an extra $789 million in tax benefits uh, this next year because, or from this year, from that tax cut, which is great. And this is why I think the economy is one of the reasons the economy is doing well. I've said it's this tax cut, but it's also the regulation cuts that how much Trump is cutting regulations. I think it was 17 to one we've talked about before. They, there is like the executive order to cut for every new regulation cut too. But it turns out they're cutting like way more, like 17 to one or some crazy number like that, which is so good for the economy. But and one of the other reasons our economy is doing so well is because companies like Amazon get to keep $790 million, 789 to be specific, million dollars more than they would have before. And this is really crucial. And this is one of the reasons, uh, a great contrast of why it's important to have tax cuts. Because what would the government have spent that $789 million on? They would have spent it on, well, at least 50% of it on Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and paying the interest on the net. That is a large sum of the money that is spent from the federal level is on those things. Opposed to what will Amazon spend it on? They will invest that money in capital or in other means. They'll do dividends or buybacks, which helps people with 401ks or other people that have own stocks. Remember, more people own Amazon stock than just Jeff Bezos and a few select rich people. But hundreds of thousands of people own stock in Amazon. And they'll also invest in other valuable uh, value providing projects as well. Who knows what else they'll get into? They're getting into healthcare. They're going to probably get into real estate. They're getting into all these sectors to provide value. And it's just so, such a contrast between the two, right? Government is going to be giving money to people that are entitled to it, quote unquote, redistributing wealth, paying down, or not even paying down, just paying the interest opposed to leaving it with a company who is going to increase value in a multiple different ways. And that is why our economy is going to be doing well for a while, I think. It's because more of this money is going back to companies to create more value to the economy around, to the community around them as well, opposed to what the government would do, which is just pay down, uh, pay down or pay, pay towards, I should say, Medicare, Social Security, Obamacare, and all that good stuff. 
And another thing is they call it tax avoidance. That's another term that they love to use, but it's not avoid tax avoidance. It's really just keeping the money that is deservedly yours according to the tax laws. I love Uncle Bernie's tweet about this. He said, if you paid the 119 annual fee to become an Amazon Prime member, you paid more to Amazon than it paid in taxes. Our job, repeal all the Trump tax breaks for the top 1% and large corporations and demand that they pay their fair share in taxes. And they're quoting the Fortune magazine where it says Amazon will pay zero in federal income tax on 11.2 billion in profit. Interesting. Good old Bernie. Now again, he was one of the Congress people in Congress that wrote this law. No doubt with his three homes or however many homes he has, he's taking advantage of these loopholes as well. But I wanna just point out this one thing, is you know what the big difference is between the 100 million prime subscribers who pay $119 annual fee and taxpayers? Is the prime members have a choice to pay for prime. And they choose to spend that amount of money because Amazon is providing value for them. They're providing a greater value than they, what they could do on their own with that $119. That is basically the philosophy of a transaction. If you thought as an individual that you could get more value from that $119 than an Amazon Prime membership, you wouldn't pay for the Amazon Prime membership. You would go spend that $119, you would invest, you would use it however else you thought you could create more value for yourself than Prime. But you think that $119 is well spent on Prime, so you're gonna allot part of your money to Prime, to Amazon, to give you the value from a Prime membership, which is pretty amazing, honestly. It's, I, it's incredible what goes on behind the scenes at Amazon, the operations, the logistics, to deliver the value that you get from Prime. And I'm saying that from an island in the middle of the Pacific. It's still amazing the shipping benefits that you get for Prime in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Opposed to the government taxing you, you don't have a choice. You're not giving them your money because the government provides some great economic value for you or any kind of value. You're giving it to the government because you are forced. If you don't give your tax money to the government and you don't follow the rules that are laid out by the tax laws that Congress writes, you're going to go to jail, you're going to get fined, your wages are going to be garnished. You have no choice. There's no value attached to what you're giving to the government. And that is why you don't get richer as a society, as a country from raising taxes. You get richer as a society, as an economy, as a country from giving money to companies who have to compete and provide value. When you attach payments to value and allow the market to determine what is valuable and not, that is what generates more and more wealth in a way that the government never can. Governments do not generate wealth. It's not their job. They can't do it. They're not designed to do it. There is no way they can do it because only a small amount of people are gonna be making decisions by definition. You can't have more people in the government than in the, or those that are being governed. It just doesn't work that way. And so you just, it just is impossible to provide value. Just look at any country as they trend more and more to authoritarian governments. Venezuela is a great example. We're, gonna see, we're seeing that with China. They were trending towards more of a private sector and now they're going back towards more of a command economy and you're going to see the impact that that's going to have over the next 10, 15 years and they are in trouble even now. It's absolutely amazing to see and it's true and it works every time. There has never been a country that has trended towards more authoritarian government that became richer. There has never been a country that has become more free, more privatized, more capitalistic, and become poorer. It doesn't happen. Yes, certain industries might become poorer, certain individuals might become poorer, but as a society over time, we'll always become richer the freer it comes because, again, capitalism is this simple thing, private property rights. And when you make the decisions for your own private property, when you are responsible for your own goods, for your own welfare, and someone else isn't telling you what to do, you're gonna make better choices. 
than what someone else would for yourself. I hope that helps. I hope you are in the know now. You feel like you're an authoritative figure on this Amazon talk. If you have any questions or comments about this, feel free to reach out to me at How to Build a Tent, or you can find me or email me at matthowtobuildatent.com, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. God bless.